Evan Carmichael is an author, speaker, and YouTuber who Gary Vee called the content DJ that inspired people. He went from making $300 per month and being introverted and shy to having 300 million people watching his YouTube videos. So today, let's learn how to choose the right life for you. Mentor me, Evan! Okay, let's kick it up with rule number one. Don't quit on what you love. If you quit on something too soon that you still love, you will regret it for the rest of your life. If you don't love it anymore, quit. Move on. You will never win doing work that you hate. But if you love it, you love it, and you move on to something else, you will look back on this day and regret it for the rest of your life that you did not see it through. Most people spend their entire life living with regrets. Don't let that be you. The hardest decision I ever had to make in my life was being an entrepreneur. I struggled a lot with the decision, do I wanna be an entrepreneur and had this opportunity to make $300 a month and earn 30% of a company versus going to work at a job that I thought I wanted, a job that I'd been preparing myself for, that this is what I wanted to do. It was in my high school yearbook of this is where I was gonna be. And here it was, earning six figures, traveling around the world, doing the investment banking that I thought I wanted to do versus making $300 a month and only, only and owning 30% of a company. And the thing that allowed me to push through and be an entrepreneur was me saying, I don't wanna live with regret. That I would rather no one fail than not know. And I gave myself a year. I said, I'm gonna give myself a year to do this. I could always go back and get another job. It may not be the same job, it probably wouldn't be the same job. It may not be as much pay, it may not be traveling as much as this job was offering me to travel. But this entrepreneurial thing, this opportunity that I had, I never knew if it would come back again. Like I thought maybe this will never happen to me again. And so I decided to go for it. And we struggled and, and it was hard, but I never ended up having to go back and get another job. And so if you're at an inflection point, if you're thinking about which path should I take, A or B, lean in with your heart, stop using your head. Your head only understands the world that currently exists. Lean in with your heart and ask yourself, which decision will I regret more if I don't do? And then go take that action. I became an entrepreneur because I didn't want to regret not having at least tried. And a great moment in my life came a number of years later where one of the people I went to university with came back and said, Evan, I went down that path. I became the investment banker and I hate my life. How do I become an entrepreneur? And I looked in his eyes and I saw the desperation and the sadness and helped him, but also was so grateful that that wasn't me because it could have been. So how do you live a life not filled with regrets? I'm going to give you a three step process that I think will help. Step number one, ask yourself, do you still love it? If you are making something, if you're in the process of creating your business and it's not getting results, ask yourself, do you still love it? It's easy to keep going when you're making money and everything's working. <laughs> Right When you're at the high, it's easy to keep going. But when it's not working out, for me, when I was making videos and it wasn't working out, it's hard to build a YouTube channel. In the early days, I kept going because I loved it. Ask yourself, this thing that you're doing every single day, this thing that you're worried about leaving and quitting and giving up on, do you still love the process of it? Not just getting some result, not just making a million dollars, not just getting a million subscribers, whatever your outcome is, the process, the work. Do you actually love the work? If you do, then you have to keep going. Step number two, ask yourself, how can you keep going? How can you keep going? How do you keep the momentum going? The biggest thing missing for most people is momentum. You're just not doing enough on a daily basis. You stop and start and stop and start and stop and start and people give up and they quit too soon before you allow that momentum to grow and to carry you. So how can you keep that momentum going? How can you do something every single day to move your mission a little bit forward, not taking giant steps, but just a little bit tiny step forward every single day? Even if that means you have to go back and get a job. Even if that means that, listen, maybe you're out of money right now. Maybe, maybe you took a bet on entrepreneurship and you tried it for six to nine months and now your bank account is dry because you spent it all. Great, maybe you have to go back and get another job. One, make sure that that job is something that you're gonna learn from, not just make an income from. But then two, make sure that when you're coming home, you're still spending 30, 45, 60, 90, 120 minutes every day. Don't let the momentum stop on your idea. 
And step number three is ask yourself, what will you do to sustain that momentum? What keeps you motivated? What keeps you going? Whether you're having pictures on your wall like I have here, whether it's watching videos like this on my channel every day, listen to a podcast, morning routines, you need to inject that into yourself every day. When you don't see the light, when you're not seeing the results, when it feels like there is no momentum, you need to demand that boldness in you every day. So ask yourself, what is the thing that makes you feel alive, bold, confident, that makes you want to go out and create and build momentum even when you don't see any light around you? What is that thing that you need? And then bring that into your morning routine. Demand that from yourself on a daily basis. Instead of hoping that you wake up all motivated today to go out and do work, successful people demand excellence from themselves on a daily basis because they put something in their morning routine that reminds them of what their mission is and how important it is to move forward. Also, if you want to have more confidence and motivation, check out our 254 series. The link is in our description below. Surround yourself with greatness. If you want to be more confident, you need to surround yourself with things that make you feel confident. Smash all of those things together because that's the unique thing that only you can do. Because your book has come out, it doesn't mean you should stop marketing. It's not just about week one when it just comes out. It's constantly marketing, 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 marketing. Rule number two, ignore the opinions of others. Your fear of other people's judgment is the single biggest factor holding back the success of your life. You want to serve others. Humans are built to serve others. You need it. It's your purpose. But serving requires someone else. And as long as you're worried about that person's judgment and opinion of you, you will stay still and never act. So you've got one foot on the brake and one foot on the gas, pushing hard, spinning your wheels and never going anywhere, knowing that you're capable of a lot more, but afraid to take action. I don't tell a lot of stories about my parents. They had a huge impact on my life. They're here on the wall behind me. I'm eight or nine years old and, and that's them above me. They're really private people, so I, I keep the stories that I share about them to a minimum. But one of my favorites are when I was in school, I was in art class and the teacher told me to do a project and he said, paint a window. And so I painted a window and then I added a sailboat and I added sunshine and I, paint, I had, had some curtains and I added a lot more to the painting. And I failed the assignment because the teacher said, well, I asked you to paint a window and you did all this other stuff. And so my parents went into school later on and said, hey, uh, what was the assignment that you asked Evan to do? And said, well, paint the window. I was like, well, he clearly painted the window. I mean, he did what you told him to do. <laughs> and and they, they stood up and became a shield for me. And I was blessed to have an amazing parents. You might have amazing parents, you might not. It doesn't matter either way. But wherever you learn and however you learn, you have to learn it. That you need to go off and express yourself. You need to go off and create the thing that you want to create even if the rules tell you that you can't do it. Even if your teachers tell you that that's crazy. Even if your parents tell you you'll never make it and they want you to do something safe and practical. You have to do it because otherwise you're teaching yourself to play small and that permeates for life. You have ideas. You're a genius. You've got Michael Jordan level talent at something. You should be off creating amazing things, but you're afraid because of other people's judgment. And as long as that is the thing that is in the back of your head, that you're not afraid of failing, you're afraid of failing in front of somebody else. You'll sing in the shower, but you won't sing on the street because you're afraid of what other people are going to think about you. And as long as that is the reason why you're not taking action, then you lose for life. And the goal of this video is to stamp that out. So I've got a three step process that I think will help. Let's dive in. Step number one is the boom, boom test. And that's your heart. When your heart's going boom, 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 right? You're nervous, you're afraid, you're scared. When your heart's beating boom, 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 that is go time. That means you have to take action. That means you got to step into it. Every time your heart is beating, especially, especially, especially around other people's judgment of you, even if you have no interest in the thing at all, just the fact that you're willing to go off and do it and risk potential embarrassment means you have to do it because you don't want to teach yourself that you catch yourself being nervous and playing small because you're teaching yourself that you suck and that's not acceptable. When you feel your heart going like this or your palms sweating or whatever your sign is that you're nervous or afraid, you have to go off and do it. Now, be safe. Don't do something stupid, obviously, right? Don't go trying to juggle knives that are on fire, okay? There are some limits, but most of the things that you're afraid of are not that. Most of the things that you want to go off and execute are not, I want to juggle flaming knives. The thing that you're afraid of are other people's opinions of if you fail or not. 
you have to stomp it out because this will haunt you for life and prevent you from accomplishing the goals that you have for yourself. So take the boom, boom test. Boom, boom. Your heart's going boom, boom. That's not play small time. That is go time. Step number two is the Quincy Jones rule. Quincy Jones, legendary music producer, had this one line, and it's in his top tens, and I love it, where he says, Not one drop of my self-worth depends on your acceptance of me. And I just, I just remember that. Anytime I'm worried about what somebody might think of me, I think back to Quincy Jones. I think back to all the people that I profiled. If you want to be a leader, if you want to be an innovator, if you want to be an entrepreneur, you're doing things that are different, right? You don't want to wake up and live the same life as everybody else. But in order to do that, you have to be willing to live a different life and to be able to face criticism for living that different life. Even if most of the judgment that's coming at you is really those people's insecurities, right? Most people who are throwing shade at you, they don't like their own life. Most people don't like their life and they'd rather attack other people who have a better life or at least trying to chase down a better life than try to do something on their own. So the Quincy Jones rule and all the people that I profile, look at them, study them, see what they went through, see what they struggled with, see how many people threw shade at them and told them they were not gonna make it. And the more you surround yourself with that and know that that's normal, like that's actually the process that you go through to be a leader, to be an innovator, to be an entrepreneur, to be a success, to be a creative, it gives you more confidence. So remind yourself of the Quincy Jones rule that not one ounce, not one drop of your self-worth comes from somebody else's opinion of you. And step number three is be the tree. I see entrepreneurs and leaders as trees. What does a tree do? A tree breathes in carbon dioxide, which, which too much of for a human is poison. Like you get carbon dioxide poisoning, it's too much. But a tree breathes it in. And what does a tree do with that carbon dioxide? They breathe it in, they eat it, grow from it, and then spits out oxygen positivity for the world. I think that's your role. I think that's your job as an entrepreneur. Your job actually is to eat everybody's judgment. Eat all the people, all the naysayers that say, you can't do this, you're never gonna make it happen. To eat it, to grow from it, and then to spit out positivity for the world. That you become the example of what's possible. That you become the, the person that people look to and say, look what this person overcame. And they did it, and then you're the shining star that other people look to, and you give permission for other people to chase their dreams too. Even the fact that you're willing to try, even if you never make it, the fact that you're willing to try will be an inspiration to other people to go off and bet on themselves. So you're the tree. I think that's part of your role. And flipping the mindset of, oh, I'm taking on this negative judgment, and people hate me and they think I suck, to say, yeah, that's what I'm here for. Because I'm gonna go off and get my dreams, and I'm gonna inspire millions of people to go off and chase theirs down as well. Be the tree. And rule number three, the last one before a very special bonus clip, focus on your distractions. The thing that you keep getting distracted by might be the very thing that you should be focusing on. So many people keep asking me, hey Evan, how do I stop getting distracted? How do I focus on my work? If you keep getting distracted, it's for one of two reasons. Either one, you don't like the work that you're doing, or two, you're afraid of it working out. The solution isn't to keep avoiding it, the solution is through. And chances are that thing that you keep getting distracted by is actually the thing that you should be focusing on. You just don't know how to make it a business yet. Now I'm a big believer in as soon as you get an idea, you test, you try, you tinker, you experiment. Idea to action, the 2% difference. Let's go, let's go, let's go. So a quick example with my top 10 series. When I first started the top 10 series, I didn't think it would become a series. I didn't think it would become this huge thing that then later defined my channel and became the most popular series on my YouTube channel. It started off because a friend of mine, Mark, posted a blog about Kanye West and how he interrupted Taylor Swift. And this was multiple years after he had actually done that. And like, come on, man, you can learn from Kanye, dude. Stop hating on Kanye. Yes, he gets himself into trouble. He deserves it. But he's also a genius. He's also somebody that you could learn from. He's won more Grammy Awards than anybody at his age. He convinced John Stevens to change his name to John Legend because it had an old school voice. There's all these amazing stories about Kanye that you can learn from his success. And so I thought, forget this. I'm not just gonna complain. I'm gonna take action and I'm gonna make a top 10 rules for success from Kanye West. And I went out myself and researched all these different clips and I put them together. And sure, there's a lot that you can't learn from Kanye. There's a lot that you don't want to model or copy and emulate into your life and business. I get it. But there's still 10 things at least that you can apply and learn from him to make you a better version of you. And so I just did it and I released it and people liked it. It was meant to be a one-off video just to show my friend Mark, to say, just watch this, Mark. <laughs> watch it, learn from it. You could learn from Kanye. And it was a distraction project. 
right? I'm working on my business. I'm working on trying to create something. Mark creates his blog post and I get distracted by it and think I want to make a video. And I put my business on hold instead of saying, I, I, no, no, forget that idea. I need to stop doing that. I need to, I need to just focus and forget all distractions. No, I said, you know what, I'm gonna put this on hold because I can't stop thinking about this. So I'm gonna do this, get it out of my system, and then I'm gonna come back to my main business. Although, that little thing that I did just as a one-off to show my friend Mark ended up becoming the entire channel. You never know. And so it's idea to action. That thing that I got distracted by ended up becoming the beginning of an entire series, an iconic series on my channel, and it might be the thing for you too. Now we got a very special bonus clip that I think you're gonna love. But before that, if you're still watching, we want to celebrate you. If you promise to take action after watching this video, give a hashtag believe in the comment below. We want to celebrate you. You need people in your life to hold you accountable because you will never push yourself as hard as you can go. You get a personal trainer, not because of what exercises you should do. You can look that up online. The real value of a trainer is to have somebody right there in front of you, in your face, telling you to do three more reps of that exercise when you want to quit. When you're going to tap out and if you were by yourself, you'd say, I'm done. And they say, give me three more because all of the growth happens in that last set. If there's nobody around you to hold you to a higher standard, you'll always know that there's another level, but you'll be too afraid to reach for it yourself. So let's use me as an example. I want to solve the world's biggest problem. I don't think people believe in themselves enough. It's why I created this channel and all the other ones I have and the books and the speaking and everything I do. I want to go out and do this impossible thing that's never going to happen. I'm never going to solve the world's biggest problem. And yet I wake up every day and I try to do it. And I use a combination of what I call aspirational mentors, which are people like Steve Jobs and Elon Musk and the people that I profile on this channel. And then I also do it from people who challenge me one-on-one. -on -one. If you watch my Entrepreneur Advice channel, I get pushed every week by my agent Steve, by psychologists in Australia, by people who are coaching me and how to get better. And they push me and they tell me I need to do more and they tell me I'm being an idiot in these areas. And like, go, this is the homework. And the more uncomfortable I feel <laughs> during that process, usually the better the advice is. If I think about the tour that I launched last year and now the tour that I'm doing this year, it started as a free tour and became a paid tour when my agent Steve pushed me to do it. Like, you need to charge for this. And immediately my heart's boom, like, boom, 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 boom. I'm scared. It means I have to do it. Having people around you who can push you to do the things that you need to do, who make you nervous, who make you scared, who see your blind spots, who cut through your BS, who tell you that's just fear talking because we'll come up with really logical reasons why we can't do something. Or aspirational mentors who when you see how they react to things, how they see things, how they understand the world, and then you look at what you're doing, it forces you to be pulled up. It forces you to take the next step up on the staircase. You need to do it because your environment's been perfectly designed to keep you where you are. Your friends, your family, all of it, it's keeping you exactly where you are. And the difference between where you are now and where you want to be and where you can be in a year, in two years, in five years, in 10 years, is gonna be the people you have around you and how much they're willing to push you, to believe in you, to tell you what you may not want to hear, but you need to hear to grow, to challenge yourself and get to the next level. If you want to learn how to raise your energy level, must check out the video next to me. I'll see you there. Much love, believe. I want you to control the first part of your day chart your start. Willpower comes from setting goals and keeping those commitments to yourself.